Hello and good morning students. Welcome back to your online tutorial class. How are you all? I hope you all are doing good at your home and you are safe. I am back with another video after a long time. In this video, we are going to start our next chapter, chapter number 6, Water. Water is very essential thing to live. It is a necessity for all the human beings and all living things. So, let's zoom into this topic. As today we are starting our new chapter, it is very important to know what we are going to learn in this chapter. For that, you can see I explore section in the course book. In this chapter, we are going to list about the uses of water, list out the qualities of water and we will be able to find out the sources of water too. In today's class, we are going to discuss about sources of water. That means from where do we get the water. Now, let's have a short introduction of water. Water is available all over the earth. It is in lakes, rivers and oceans. We need water to live. Plants and animals also need water to live and grow. In short, all living things need water. Water is the most important liquid on the earth. Do you know our earth covers almost 75% of earth's surface in the form of oceans, lakes and rivers. That is why our earth looks blue in color. Water is having many uses. People have many uses of water besides drinking. Can you tell me the activities which requires water? Yes, you are right. We use water for various other purposes besides drinking. We use it for cleaning, washing, bathing and cooking. Water plays an important role in our lives. Without water, it is not possible to sustain. Let's read. Water. We need water to live. Plants and animals also need water to live and grow. Sources of water. We get water from rain. Rain water fills up rivers, lakes, ponds and oceans. There is water under the ground too. It is called groundwater. We can use it by digging wells. Now, what do you see in the first picture? See in the second picture. What is the woman doing in the third picture? And where is the water coming from in all the third picture? You can see in the first picture, there are two children. They are playing with a boat, right? Then, in the second picture, there is a lake. In the third picture, the woman is taking out the water from the well. And the fourth question was, where is the water coming from in all the three pictures? In all the three pictures, the, was, the water is coming from rain. So, the main source of water in the earth is rain. Now, let us solve checkpoint number 1 on page number 48. Color the sources of water. Here, you have to color the boxes where the sources of water is given. The options are rain, shop, rivers, clouds, well and lake. From this, you have to color that boxes where the source of water is given. Do you know? From where do we get water? Yes, we get water from rain. Rain water fills the rivers, lakes, ponds and oceans. Besides that, there is water under the ground too. It is called groundwater. We can also use it by digging wells. When we dig wells, at that time all the groundwater is being used by us.
Have you ever wondered how does it rain? Okay, let me tell you about it. When the sun hits the water in the rivers, lakes and oceans, the water turns into the cloud. The cloud you see are actually made up of millions of tiny droplets. When these tiny droplets become big and heavy, they fall down from the cloud to the earth. If it is warm outside, then the water falls as rain. If it is cold outside, the water falls as snow. When the rain or the snow falls on the earth, it waters the trees and plants and also fills up the rivers, lakes and oceans. In this way, we get the fresh water from the rainwater. Our topic for today is water cycle. The sun heats up the water from oceans, lakes and rivers and water changes into water vapor by the process of evaporation. Plants also lose water in the form of water vapor from their leaves into the air by the process of transpiration. As the water vapor rises up into the air, it starts cooling down and forms tiny water droplets. These water droplets come together to form clouds. This process is called condensation. When the clouds start getting heavy and cannot hold the water droplets anymore, they fall back to the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow. This process is called precipitation. Some of the water that falls on the earth seeps into the ground. This water is available to us in the form of ground water. The remaining water falls back into oceans, lakes, rivers and seas. This process is called collection. Then the sun starts heating up this water once again. This circulation of water is called water cycle. In I wish I knew section of the course book, you can see one sentence that the water which is available in the oceans are salty and that is why we cannot drink it. That means that all the water which is present in the ocean is that salty that we cannot drink it. Do you remember? I told you right now that 75% of earth's surface is covered with water. But after that also we are facing many problems related to water. Do you know why? Because most of the water which is present on the earth is salty. And that is the only reason that we depend mostly for water on the rainwater. And because of the water cycle we get rain and through that rain the water is being filled in the rivers, lakes and oceans. Which is the fresh water that is being used by us for drinking. I hope you are clear with this fact. And if you are still confused, let me clear your doubt through a video. In I extend section of the course book, you will see a question, how is a pond different from a river? For that, first of all, you need to understand what is a pond. A pond is an area of water that is smaller than a lake. While if we talk about what is a river, a river is a large natural flow of water that goes across land and into the sea. So, you can understand from this definition that there is a major difference between a pond and a river. As I told you, a pond is a small area of still fresh water. It is different from a river or stream because it does not have moving water. While if we talk about a river, river is a large area of water and that is having a natural flow. That means 
the water in the river is flowing so there is a small difference between pond and river that that pond is human made resource or it gets created by human but if we talk about river river is a natural resource of water river is large area of water while pond is a small area of water in pond there is still water that it does not move but in river the water is flowing or moving now we are at the end of the session so it's time for the quick revision of whatever we learnt in today's class in today's class we discussed that we need water to live plants and animals also need water to live and grow water is the most important liquid on the earth then we discussed about the sources of water and got to learn that we get water from rain rain water fills the rivers lakes ponds and oceans there is water under the ground too it is called the ground water we can use it by digging wells then we discussed how does the rain form and learned that when the sun hits the water in the lakes rivers or oceans the water gets turned into the cloud the clouds are made up of ma uh, many million tiny droplets all these tiny droplets when become big and heavy they fall down on the earth in the form of rain in this way we get rain and when the water fall down as rain it waters the plants and the trees and also fill up the rivers lakes and oceans i hope in today's class you learned many thing related to water you got to learn about the sources of water and how the rain forms i'll be back with another video till then stay home stay safe thanks for watching this video lastly i want to say wear your mask and follow social distancing toodles